How are you doing, my friend? I am so happy to be here with you talking about how to find your niche. I know this is one of the roadblocks for many yoga and wellness practitioners like you. So today I am hoping to bring some light into this subject. I am hoping I'm hoping to give you some clarity on how do you find your needs, okay? <laughs> and um, before we dive in, I'm telling you that um, this is important. Finding a niche is super important. For me, what was like a huge shift when I started to, to, to hone in in my message and to connect with my ideal student or client, when I started to do all of the niche work, all of the avatar work, and I started to understand who were the people I wanted to work with, and I started to have conversations with them and to understand their pain points and so on, it was magical. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating here. It came a point where before I did have my niche, I was talking, you know, I was posting on social media whatever was coming to my mood at the moment, you know, whatever was coming to my mind. And that was bringing different kind of people to my channels, people they were that were very random. And so when I started to really hone in and do the niche work, from that moment on, all of the people that started to come and join my Instagram and Facebook channels were all people that belong to my niche. So perhaps you find yourself right now in the situation where you find that the message that you are putting out there on social media, it's not really helping you connect with people. Maybe you notice that people don't really get to connect or to resonate with the message that you are putting out there. Um, a step, of course, uh, you know, friends or family that, that support you and love you and they would go and comment. Maybe you find it difficult to market or sell your offerings. Maybe you do have a workshop. Maybe you do have a retreat or maybe you do have a, you know, uh, a, a bunch of sessions that you want to sell and you find it difficult to connect with your ideal clients. All right. Um, or perhaps you have the feeling that anything that you are post posting out there on the internet, it's getting lost into the sea of algorithm, so to speak. It means like, you know, like you post something and then it disappear. If that is the case, this video today is for you. I am going to tell you that one of the most important things, if that is the case, if you feel like that, one of the first steps you need to be thinking right now, it's about niching down. And I'm telling you this because I've been there before. I've been a nicheless <laughs> person before. I didn't have a niche. Uh, and I can't guarantee that the moment I started to work on this, it really shifted things for me. And I want that for you as well. You want to get and to connect with people that they would see your profile or they would see your offerings and they would be like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I'm looking for. This is exactly the teacher that I need or this is exactly the offering that I need into my life right now. So let's dive in and see how, what are the things, um, what are the things you need to consider when finding your niche. And I know right away that for some of you that might be more familiar with the word niche and specializing, you might be coming with some objections like, Manu, I don't know, I don't want to categorize myself, I don't want to limit myself, or I don't want to pigeonhole myself, I want to teach everyone. And that, my friend, it's a mistake. 
because if you want to teach everyone what's gonna end up happening is that you are not going to attract anyone if you want to teach everyone you are not going to attract anyone all right so we really need to do this work on focusing on one single person why what are the benefits let me tell you the five benefits that i got to experience myself and the five benefits that i know you will experience once you get to look for your niche the first one it's going to help you stand out as a yoga or wellness practitioner and let's face this the reality is that if we are talking about yoga teachers per se the market my friend it's indeed very saturated so the way you get to the differentiate yourself from other yoga or wellness practitioners it's by defining who are the people you want to work with also known as your niche and what are the problems you are going to solve to those people that's going to help you stand out as a yoga or wellness practitioner Number two, it's going to help you connect much better with your community, with your audience, with your peeps. When you get to understand them from the inside out and you, and you get to know how they feel and how, you know, what are the thoughts that they have about the problems they do have and they encounter in life, that it's going to allow you to really connect with your people through your content and through the conversations that you have with them. This is going to eventually help you build trust. And building trust, it's going to pave the way for you to make sales. Okay, whatever that is that you want to sell, your workshop, as I say, your upcoming teacher training, your, you know, month membership whatever that is so let's go to the third third reason and the third reason it's that finding a niche and and willing to look for that person specific and 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 focusing on solving that specific problem it's going to help you positioning yourself as a specialist in something specific and perhaps the word specialist might feel a little bit intimidating i get that if that is the case but think about this um, and a specialist it's someone that focuses on something very specific and one of the things this is going to do is that when you get to deliver deliberately I hope that's thing more like if you get to intentionally choose who is the people you want to help and what's the problem you're going to solve people are going to know that you are that person and every time they're going to have a rep every time they're going to have someone let's say that you work for athletes every time they're going to hear someone asking for you know I wish I would um, find a yoga teacher who works with athletes they're going to be like, oh, of course, I do know one. I know that person. So it really, really works really well that way. When you choose what you want to be known for. The fourth reason this is a good idea and it is going to help you is because it's going, it's going to make your marketing much more easy. Marketing, you know, it's a lot of work. It takes time. It's something that... You know we have to do if we have a business we need to do marketing whether we like it or not so when you focus on one single per one single person on your niche that is going to make it super super easy and finally the fifth benefit of, of finding a niche is that you're gonna stop competing with other yoga or wellness practitioners uh, by lowering your prices this is something that I've seen again and again, especially I see this with retreats. Excuse me. I see this with retreat leaders. Retreat leaders who they don't have any specific target audience for their retreat. They create a well-being retreat without any target audience. And when they get to price that retreat, what they do is to look how other practitioners 
half price the retreat and that is a huge mistake my friend because each retreat is unique and you cannot price it you know comparing with uh, your retreat with other yoga or wellness practitioners so what's the thing the thing here the idea here is that you get to specialize and you get to work with some specific kind of person solving a specific kind of problem think for a moment when you would go to the doctor let's say that you have a health problem and let's say that your health problem is with your mouth let's say that you have a tooth decay would you go to a doctor to any doctor let's say any doctor that is in your city which is like a kind of a you know like a doctor imagine a doctor that could do like kind of everything and anything and it's perhaps a cheaper price or would you go to that another doctor who is a dentist who specializes in tooth decay and you know fixing your your mouth problem and even if they are more expensive okay so the dentist is more expensive than the other doctor who who, who is like a kind of a general doctor that can't do anything but even though this doctor can do anything, even can, can treat your, your, your tooth decay, which doctor would you choose? Exactly. I hope you say the dentist because this is what I would say. It's going to be more expensive, but of course, it's, we know it's going uh, to help us solve that problem. All right. So having said this, having said these five benefits that are important, for you to consider when you know uh, when you feel a little bit hesitant about finding a niche now that I'll give you five reasons let's dive in and let's see what are those five aspects that you need to consider and the first aspect is that there is a passionate connection when you work with the niche sometimes you get to work with your ideal client it's someone who was in your journey but it was it is a little bit before you are a little few steps ahead in that journey it's not always like that but many times it happens like that in my case it happened like that like that i used to be a yoga teacher and now i help yoga teachers with business marketing and retreat staff those are things that i did before i didn't know how to do and then when i learned i realized that that was something helpful for yoga teachers in your case you might also help people that are a little bit uh, uh, behind you in the, in their well-being journey as i say it's not necessarily the case but it could be but something really important to consider is to have a passionate connection with these people you want to work with people you really feel by heart and you really like to spend time with them second aspect to consider when looking for your niche it's that there is a financial alignment okay when you are running a business you need to think about the money whether we like it or not you know money it's an energy with the business we are putting energy out there to the world so that energy needs to be compensated now many people that you're gonna find they might even be part of your uh, you know they might look like your ideal student or client but they might not be able to afford your services and that it's okay you know you may want on the side of your business you might want to do something more affordable for some people or you might have the content that you share for free maybe it's accessible for everyone but for those who really want to invest in you they need to uh, uh, pay a higher price and of course not everyone is going to be able to afford that but that it's also okay you want to work with people that are not afraid to invest in their well-being that's super important okay so let's look for the third aspect which is problem solving 
All right, so when choosing a niche, this aspect is super important. You need to ask yourself, what kind of problem does my potential ideal client have that I am able to fix or I'm able to help them relieve that problem through the practice of yoga, through whatever it is that I am um, facilitating, you know? So that's another aspect to consider, for sure, really important. The next aspect, number four, it's to understand if there is a real demand, okay? Look if, uh, you know, if that uh, niche, it's, it's real, there is a group of people that have that kind of psychographics and that they look alike and that they do have a problem that they share that it's super important for you to understand if that is real. And in that case, doing a market research or having some conversations with people who would fit the profile of your niche will help you understand if there is a real demand for you know, solving that problem. And the fifth part that I want to, the fifth aspect that I wanna check with you today is that also get uh, you get to be aware of the market uh, gap. Check if there are other practitioners, other yoga teachers, other people, perhaps even in different industries, working with your niche, solving that specific problem. Because if there is no one, two things can happen. One of them is that, you know, you are the only person in the world doing that, and you're gonna get, you know, your business is gonna flourish. But that is not how this happens most of the times. Because most of the times, if there is not a real demand, when there is a real demand, there is actually already, probably most likely, there is people already that are trying to fix that problem. So I hope this was helpful today. Uh, I want to end up uh, telling you that I do have my workshop, Niche and Shine, which is a workshop that I um, that I have. It's a pre-recorded one, and uh, you have a workbook, and um, you have a spreadsheets, video, and it's a, a self-paced uh, course that it will help you defining your ideal client. And if you want to find more information about this course, you can check the links um, on the description of this video or in the blog where you are finding this content. Anyway, that's all that I wanted to share with you for today. I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments. I'm always super happy to hear from you. And um, 